Hey there, me again, kind of cheating here, doing two days in one, but hey, what can I say? I'm on a roll, trying to get stuff out. So yesterday I talked a bit about my process of recovering, of grieving and healing, of uh, processing a really hard time after India and reconstructing my identity, frankly, if I'm honest. And one of the key moments in that journey was deciding to move down to New Mexico and participate on another straw bale building project. I uh, really enjoyed building with straw and clay and the earth in Israel, but I came into the project quite late. The bales had already been set, the walls were already in place, and I was just doing loads of clay rendering, which was great. But I wanted to actually learn how you could do this stuff from the beginning. So thanks to my wife, Sophie, I owe a lot of my jobs and my projects to her. She reached out to a bunch of straw bale builders in Colorado and New Mexico and Arizona. And we went and visited a bunch of them just to kind of meet people. And we met this one man named Cadman Witty, uh, who runs Paha Construction, which Paha is Spanish for straw. And I ended up going down to work for Cadman. He was such a generous guy in that I really didn't have any skills to offer him. But he asked the owner of this prospective house that we were going to build how they felt about having me as a helping hand, even though I was unskilled. And myself and Cadman and his son, we went out and we actually visited a forest that had just burned down and we cut down the trees because they were burnt. They were nothing, they had no leaves, they were just charred. And we used those trees, the vegas as they called them, as the timber, as the beams for the house. And we built the entire house from scratch. The foundation had already been laid a few weeks before I got there, but everything else we did together that summer. And as I was writing and processing this really hard time that I'd been through, some grief and trauma and loss and trying to reconstruct my identity, I found it so liberating to use my body. I'd obviously spent uh, quite a bit of 2012 doing physical labor, volunteering at the South Bank, shoveling tons and tons of soil every day. I'd obviously spent a bit of time plastering with clay and I was getting an affinity for working with my hands. I've spent most of my working life behind a computer, but I find there is this incredible benefit of getting outside and working with the earth. And in this case, building a home out of natural materials. And I still to this day find it liberating. And right now I think I'm, I'm suffering a bit from having so much time in front of a screen. And I, I found that my time in New Mexico really showed me something deep and something beautiful about working outside, about working with my hands, about connecting with nature. And I think there's something profound there for a lot of us. I know there's this notion of biophilia. There are these studies that demonstrate how nature affects us. And I know most people live in cities, but as this pandemic is reshaping the structure of society, I wonder what we can do differently to bring nature closer into our lives, to take our lives closer to nature. I wonder what we can do to live more in harmony with the world around us. I wonder if we can take our conference calls outside. I wonder if we can have a precedent where <laughs> we take forest walks while talking on the phone. I wonder if we can take our eyes off the screen and tune in and listen and be there, but actually to be immersed in an amazing wash of scenery and animal life. I wonder what would happen if we stuck our hands in the soil every day and looked at the diverse universe that lives in soil, that is soil. I wonder what would happen if more of us did this together. I think there's a great prospect for positive change in the simplest stuff and the everyday stuff and the stuff that's already here. And I think a lot of us are suffering mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically. We are suffering from a sedentary life and the solution <laughs> is all around us. It's here, it's waiting for us. Our ancestors knew the wisdom because they needed to survive. They had no choice but to work with their hands and be outside. They had 
no large scale industrialized mechanized agriculture that allowed one farmer to produce food for tens of thousands. They had to understand what grew and what they could eat and what they couldn't. They had to understand the seasons. And I think we've lost this and I think we've lost a part of ourselves in the process. So just a few thoughts from me. I hope something resonates with you. Go outside, <laughs> get your hands in the soil, enjoy the world around you. Might not be here forever.